President Muhammad Buhari has replied the Senate that it is only the President that can sack the service chiefs. This is in reaction to the resolution of the Senate earlier in the day asking the service chiefs to resign or get sacked over the rising insecurity in the nation, especially the recent killing of soldiers and mass resignation in the military. But the President, in a test statement titled Service Chiefs Position of Presidency on Resolution by the Senate, said President Muhammad Buhari reserves the right to appoint all SAC service chiefs. The statement on the verified Twitter handle of the presidency reads. And joining us online uh, this morning is the former Assistant Director of Department of State Security, Dennis Amakri. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. You're welcome. The Senate overwhelmingly resolved that the service chiefs should resign. What is your take on this? I think this is overdue because uh, if you remember very well, uh, just some weeks back, the president had a meeting with um, the service and he told them that enough is enough. And um, they are not going to uh, any no more excuses again. Uh, no more excuses, then uh, we continue losing our people, uh, we continue uh, losing uh, um, so soldiers who are uh, deserting or who are resigning. Um, so I, I think it's high time that the service chiefs uh, go ahead and uh, do the needful by resigning. If they, if they don't resign, I think the head of the uh, ask them, uh, to retire immediately. Why, why do you think the call was directed to the service chiefs and not to the president uh, to sack them from service? Well, uh, like the presidency said, uh, it is his uh, prerogative, uh, is the prerogative of the president to keep them or to sack them. But um, we cannot continue to do the same thing the same old way. If you listen to what uh, the Senate was saying, um, they had this uh, uh, ambush, ambushes that are going on. And, um, you know, what does that really mean? It means that the, the, the terrorists themselves are having information about the military. They are having information about the military of their movements, you know, enough to plan to ambush them and kill and kill them. So... Um, either you uh, sanitize the military itself or you, you change the leadership, uh, which uh, will uh, give a better morale to them because the Air Force is not uh, patrolling enough to see uh, where these uh, bandits are hiding and waiting for the military when they are in, or there is no synergy between the Army and the Air Force on uh, normal movements. And then, of course, we are, we are talking of even this one in the Northwest. In the South, where the Navy, the Navy itself is operating, there's a problem, serious problem, that uh, piracy is going on. And then, of course, you have uh, uh, people, sailors, taking the hostages and so forth. So I think these service chiefs, uh, they've done their best. It is time for them to go home. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I was, I was um, trying to know why uh, the Senate wasn't, um, you know, asking the president to... Um, you, to of course, you know, ask them to leave. And now let's also quickly talk about the president's response um, to the Senate's decision. Um, is, is this a show of might or he's simply just setting the record straight? And do you also maybe think that the president should also feel the same way uh, that the National Assembly feels? Uh, the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And uh, we believe that he's aware, he knows, he knows what is going on. And I uh, should take the necessary action. The Senate has told them now, they have passed a resolution that they should be sacked, you know. So I think he should take it well. He might feel that he's the commander-in-chief. He the last uh, stop on it. But he should at this time, you know, listen to the Senate. I think there is a very good energy between the uh, National Assembly and the presidency. And I uh, see that everybody's been asking for it, and uh, he, he should, should listen to them and do it. And, and, and what, what, would you, what would it mean if the president decides to ignore um, the call from, you know, from the Senate at this time? I think the president would uh, 
be more uh, responsive. Uh, he has ignored the call. It's not starting now. The call has been going on for a very long time. Uh, he has not those calls. We agree it is priority, but Senate has far come out to Mr. President. This is the situation we cannot uh, get. And of course, he has also said the last thing that enough is no more excess. All the need is being given to them. It depends whether they're using it properly or not, but you know, enough enough. And um, I think the president should act on it now. Well, I was trying to establish um, what you feel um, Nigerians, you know, should have or should make, you know, out of, you know, the, the conversation between the Senate and the presidency and, of course, the service chiefs. If the uh, presidency decides to ignore the Senate at a time like this, um, what would that mean to Nigerians? Well, you know, this particular call by the Senate, and then, of course, if I remember, even by the House, is a call by Nigerians, because those are the representatives of Nigeria. And uh, they've said that these services should at least go and uh, retire. So I don't really expect the president to, uh, to ignore it. But if he does, uh, maybe there might be other ways of uh, trying to convince him, but uh, I believe he will. You, you, you believe that he will take action just like the Senate has uh, directed? Yes, I believe so strongly. Okay, and I was also asking, um, do you think that new service chiefs might be the answer that we, we seek with regard to security in Nigeria today? You mean changing the service chiefs? Yes. Uh, well, the military, the military itself has had problems. If you remember, they said that uh, the weapons that are being used by the bandits is more superior to what our people are using. Uh, that means there is need for some kind of uh, equipment uh, rejigging. Uh, we need to use and uh, deploy technology, which I don't think we are using to the fullest capacity. Because fighting uh, terrorism these days is not just uh, man on man or boot to boot. It has to be by technology, heavy deployment of technology to know their locations and all kinds of surveillance uh, um, uh, 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 equipment. Surveillance that they need to use. So, so it is very, very important to rejig the military, give them the right equipment. And then bring in those fresh ideas from the younger officers who have been waiting in the wings. Yep. Many of them are even retiring because the people in front of them are not living. So I think this is the right thing to do. The, uh, the commander in chief is a military man. He knows. He okay. knows what to do. And uh, we expect that uh, this will help. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Sir Dennis Amakri, for, of course, uh, coming back and wrapping up that conversation with us. We hope to speak Thank with you. Thank you for again. having me. You're welcome.